Hi guys. Today we're going to take a look at the Tiny Trainer V2 and compare that to the Tiny Trainer V1. And the reason I've got my daughter Isley here is she's been uh, learning to fly drones and she has been uh, helping me to build this Tiny Trainer V2. So you're getting pretty good at flying, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I think you're going to be racing this su this summer? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're going to be flying one of these Tiny Trainers? Maybe. I think you will. So the cool thing about the Tiny Trainer V2 that made it really easy to work on is we can just open this canopy right up and then everything in there is accessible. And even without having that open, um, the USB port on the side is accessible and the firmware port for HD0 is accessible. So I'll be doing a more detailed build video on this later, but right now I don't have time to do that. Um, so I, I did take a few pictures here. I tested out uh, installing different VTXs like the Whoop Lite VTX and the Whoop VTX. Um, installed here is just the old Whoop VTX. I highly recommend uh, getting the Whoop Lite VTX and then powering it off of the 5 volt pad on the AIO. Uh, that's going to be better because um, it's a little bit smaller VTX and it also has a a little bit of a, a metal shield on it, so it might be a little more durable for us. Um, I'm still using this VTX from my original Tiny Trainer, and it has seen a lot of damage. Um, I actually ripped the UFL off of there and had to uh, solder a new one on, um, but this thing keeps on going. So later on I'll do a best practices build video on this, and I think uh, Isley might help out with that one. Would that be fun? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I think there'll be some Kapton tape and some E6000 glue included. This video is mostly going to be about how it flies um, and my initial impressions on this. Also, this is a uh, pre-production one. I did pay for it, um, but they, they sent it out to me a little bit earlier than everyone else. Uh, I don't have the uh, um, arm guards on it yet, but uh, I'll be getting that pretty soon. and. I'll revisit this when that comes. Mostly this video will be testing out and comparing the flight performance of these two. All right, well, thank you, Isley. Boo. Boo. One big thing that I had to do on this build to convert it from a Tiny Trainer V1 to V2 is this is a Beta PV AIO board that has a down facing USB port. And I actually had to rip that off with pliers because there's no hole in the bottom of this uh, frame for that USB port to pass through. But we do have the additional USB port on the side that's always actually accessible in this build, so that's um, really good. Um, another point to bring up is that uh, some of the cameras protrude out. Now you would have seen that earlier in this video and some of them um, are kind of flush like this one. Um, so that's going to cause some issues with durability and what Armando 533 is going to do is he's going to make some plugs that you basically will plug into the front of this that'll fix the camera angle and also add some uh, camera protection. And I think that's a really great idea. Um, this polycarbonate case is thicker than it is on the V1, and it is very durable. I crashed it a lot and really beat on it, and uh, I think we can trust this going forward. All right, let's compare the flight performance of Tiny Trainer V2 to Tiny Trainer uh, V1. They're about the same weight, and the difference here is the camera's a bit higher up, so you don't see the props in view quite as much as with this one. Um, I've also got the Nano 90 on here, but I'll switch it to 60 FPS mode for comparison. So let's give it a shot. This is Tiny Trainer V1 with the 60 FPS cam, uh, Nano V1. I always have like this V1 Nano camera. I think a lot of people kind of skipped over it, but. Uh, I think it's the best widescreen camera we've got. I do have a wider angle lens on this also, because I like to have more vertical field of view. 
So let's just uh, go and uh, push this thing a bit. I'm obviously most comfortable with this guy because I fly this one several times a week. It's kind of my favorite go-to quad. Um, it is a very tight build though. It's a difficult drone to build. Let's see. Let's see if we can beat it with the uh, Tiny Trainer V2 here. Which one's going to feel the better, best to me? We do have a better antenna on this. This has got a, a nice 533 like Axie 2 antenna. And then on my V2, I've, I've only got a, um, a dipole um, ORT. Just because I can't find these antennas in stock anywhere. All right, that's about enough of that. All right, let's swap from Tiny Trainer V1 to Tiny Trainer V2. So make sure we're in 60 FPS mode. Yep. All right, let's let it go here. So 60 FPS 4x3, uh, yeah, this sensor only has a 4x3 option because it's a 4x3 sensor. You can tell I like, oop, oops, I like that the camera's up a little bit higher on this. The props are a little bit more out of view. I think I've got an even wider angle lens on this than the uh, Tiny Trainer V1. Really good authority. I mean, really, they fly just about the same. The difference is this one's newer and easier to work on because the canopy opens up. I definitely prefer the uh, 4x3 view on this to the uh, 16x9 though. Uh, it's not as immersive, but I can feel I can see everything I need to see without moving my eyes around. It's a little bit more um, information too, kind of packed in the middle. Woohoo! I'm try that one more time. <laughs> tight, tight, tight. All right. Love this tiny trainer. Oop. Seems like when I hit things, rather than hitting the prop, I'm hitting the nose. We'll check uh, for any damage on this. But so far, this. Uh, canopy has just been amazing. I've also had issues in the past with uh, my own custom mounts for cameras um, vibrating and uh, this is rock steady, rock solid. I mean, you want the most confidence in a frame I think this is this is it. Yippee ki -yay! That's what I love about this thing. You don't have to worry about it. You just send it. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, flip this thing over.
Yeah. Definitely new favorite thing. I like it. I'll check and see how much damage we got on the canopy after that. I just want to say after all that crashing, uh, this thing is still looking pretty flawless. And uh, I think this little nick in the lens was there already. Um, I think there's a little bit of a smudge here on the canopy right here where it hit. Um, very durable. It's a, it's a stiffer, thicker plastic than you might expect. I think it's polycarbonate. Um, pretty cool. Love this thing. So, Nano 90 crop mode. About 45 degree angle. Go ahead and push this thing. Hard to go back to 60 after flying 90. Whew. Just push it more to the limit, get closer to things. Whew. Man, man. See if we can get out of here. There we go. So, yeah, that's 90. Yep. Wow, I instantly felt that uh, <laughs> slightly slower. Huh. Still really good latency, but slower. Super smooth. Yep, it's definitely a choice you got to make with this camera if you want to turn on the high res mode or the uh, uh, 90 FPS mode. It depends on what you're doing. For most of my flying, I prefer higher frame rate. I beat the snot out of this thing. Yeah, that's fun. Perfect little combination. Tiny Trainer V2, Nano, uh, and the Nano 90. kind of enjoy flying here. Oops. 